everyone, Virgilio Urbano, the uh, healthy Italian. And uh, I'm going to make sauerkraut. I, I, I have another video on kimchi. Sauerkraut is a little more simple. Um, so um, so I'll let you know uh, we are in uh, September, September of September 12th of uh, 2013. And as you know from my other videos where I started back in February, um, I'm still down uh, about 50 pounds. I was down 55, but I've been uh, <clears throat> going to the gym for the last six weeks. So actually I, I feel pretty good that I'm putting on muscle weight, but I'm still eating good. And, um, <clears throat> you know, sauerkraut, which is a, uh, uh, has natural probiotics in it, is just a great way to just, you know, stay healthy and keep your digestive system with the good bacteria, the lactose bacillus, I think it's called. And uh, especially if you're taking a lot of antibiotics, uh, this helps build the good bacteria back into your system. So just a couple of things on this particular recipe, and I will stop this and I'll chop everything up. But you gotta have your tools, all right? So, um, <clears throat> you know, I got cabbage. I have 17 heads of cabbage because I got a 15 liter crock that, you can see this, that I bought at uh, Amazon, you know, for about 100 and 20 bucks. Well worth it. That way, um, you know, I have to burp jars all day. But so this is for a big, this is for a big batch. And this will make probably enough sauerkraut for me for four to five to six months uh, after we let it sit. <clears throat> so I got my sauerkraut good. This is locally grown Colorado um, uh, cabbage. So not certified organic, but they say they don't use pesticides. So this is locally grown, right, you know, just 30 minutes from here. Um, I got onions, and um, I'm going to put carrots in this recipe. And then you need some uh, sea salt. I, I like the pink Himalayan a lot too, so I mix them with regular sea salt. And uh, juniper berries, which I am, these are whole, so I'm just going to probably run those through the, um, through the chopper and just chop them in half. Um, and caraway seeds. Now, I got this stuff at our local natural grocers, and they have this stuff in bulk. You see the bags? And I mean, this was $1.55. This would be like six, seven, eight dollars in the store. Caraway seeds was 87, ooh, excuse me, 87 cents for a bag. And this caraway seed, which I bought before I found this, was six dollars for a little a little jar. So if you can find the stuff in bulk, um, you can save yourself a ton of money. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just one one little tip. Last time I made this, you know, I got this handy duty RoboCoop here, and um, I left the the, the uh, stems in uh, where I have it. Oh, okay, in here and. I thought he's just gonna just you know this machine is so good it did slice it up perfectly. The thing is these never get soft. So what will happen is it's almost like wood that's in your sauerkraut. So make sure you take out the stems or whatever you want to call the inside of the the cabbage. You know when you when you when you cut out, make sure you get rid of that. Um, I tried you know you can take this and juice it. Also one other thing is is that you need to save some of the outs outside skins because you're going to use that as a dam. So make sure that you, you peel you know, a few layers down just to make sure to get rid of any, any stuff. And the ones that you do use, you want to make sure you wash. And, um, and then we, uh, we go ahead and chop it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all these ready to chop. And then I'm going to show you how long it takes with a RoboCoop to um, slice 17 heads of cabbage um, we got four large onions and about mm, 12 carrots and we'll see how long it takes because um, like I, in another one of my videos I said you know if you these things run about a thousand dollars but you know a lot of restaurants go out of business and you can find these machines and you find them on eBay and, and different things and if you're in a you know if you can get like people that are on, on, on the same bandwagon you're like in a little co-op you know maybe we can pitch in you know, and, and you can get together and you can do a sauerkraut party and get all this stuff done and, you know, you can make multiple crocs and uh, you save, you know, save so much money. I was just actually at the store and they had a bag of sauerkraut 
um, that was fresh and probiotic, the stuff that we'll be making. And it was $8 for a little back. I mean, $8. I mean, I'm going to make gallons. I'll probably make, uh, well, I'm going to make 15 liters. So 15 liters. So you just think about it. And this was, um, um, this cabbage, locally grown, in season. I think I paid $18 for, cab for all this cabbage. So, when you, you know, literally, you know, on the retail side, this is probably $500 worth of cabbage, uh, literally, so um, in sauerkraut. So it, it, it's a good investment, it's delicious. I'm making this one simple. I've done it with, you know, I've done it with apple and jalapenos, but I figured, you know, when I go to jar it and I put them in half gallon jars, is that if I want to do something, that's what I'm gonna do. If I want to add some, um, some uh, like Thai pepper, you know, I can make one bath spicy, make one regular. I'm going to try one with horseradish, you're going to take fresh horseradish and grind that up and then put that in the jar. And then it's going to continue to ferment and it'll get the flavors of that. So um, I'm going to, I'll be back in, uh, in a little bit after I get this all chopped up and we'll see how long it takes us with this machine because this, you know, chopping this by hand would be hours and hours. Okay everyone, we're, we're back. I got, as you can see, I have a mound of cabbage here already uh, chopped up and um, and a few things, that, you know, I've talked about this. Here's a big size restaurant style bowl, like $10 at a restaurant supply place. You know, get, you know, get some, <clears throat> some big, you're gonna need some big tool, you know, you know they say go big or go home. Um, and I got one of these, which is a, I got it at the Korean store, and um, I have it, you know, and it has a strainer. So I already have water in here. So this is a great way, instead of putting it into the sink, you know, in one step. So I'm going to grab my phone, and uh, I'm going to set the timer. I'm going to see how long it takes with this machine to, uh, to grind up all this, in, all this uh, sauerkraut. So here we go. Turn on our RoboCoop. stems out so I, I'm finding that there's a couple little ones in there hopefully you know, I, I should spend a little more time making sure I get them all out the core I'm talking about here's some more here so I'll probably go through that and pick those out Full, so I'm just going to dump this in the big bowl. You can see how beautiful it's, the cabbage is. And we're going to have a lot of it. I'm actually just leaving the camera on for all this because this is something you get real serious into like I am and like you said if you can get some people to pitch in or you know you find one of these machines at the at the at the market and, you know and it does everything I mean you want to make you make your own homemade salsa I mean it's it's, it's quite it's, you know it, it does everything you know it's like, it's literally like a, another person in my restaurant, you know, so it, it's, it's, it, it's an amazing machine. And I have the luxury of having an extra one, so that's why I have one. Uh, but, you know, so if you have a helper, obviously a lot of this stuff could go a lot faster, 
you know, so it, you know I'm kind of trying to do everything for the camera so you can see. So some things are not always in the best position. And the mellow load, dump that in. My goodness, there's a lot of freaking cabbage. Are you sure last time I filled that thing up it was 15 heads? I mean 18, uh, 18 heads of cabbage. So whatever you do, you know, you, you need to have some kind of cabbage slicer. So spend the, spend the money and, uh, and buy a, you know, a, a, a fairly, you know, good cabbage slicer if you're doing anything because you will just be, you will just be forever on big, on big batches. Now, if you're only going to do a little one, you know, um, it's probably not so bad, you know, you know, if you can do them in jars. Um, I just, you know, I did them in jars, and you got to burp them and babysit them and all that stuff. Where with a fermenting crop, you know, it has water around the ridge, and it prevents, uh, it lets the air, it lets the gas out, and doesn't let the air in, and you don't have to worry about, you know, mold and stuff like that. You know, it does a really good job, you know, because the lactic acid, nothing can live in it. So, Issues. All right, here's another batch. So this whole thing is almost full. Man, that, that thing is huge. It's like a small swimming pool, I think. But the cabbage, when we after we you know we start we we beat it, then uh, it it really it really shrinks up a lot. shells are falling off, so that takes a little more time to scoop those up. And, uh, and, and, and this machine is, 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 you know, you just have to be super careful. You know, you don't want to stick your hands in there because it, it, will, it will destroy everything in its sight. So just make sure you don't go too deep in there. You have to go in, but, you know, think crazy, crazier things have happened to people, so. seconds is what it took us to to uh, to do 17 heads of, of cabbage so you know that's why I wanted to just show you because I think this this machine is 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 is, is, a, is amazing and I just want to I want to show you oh my goodness <clears throat> there's water in here too but I mean, this is how much um, how much cabbage we had. One thing I didn't show you is is that this red thing in here is actually a strainer, you know. And I already have actually I put in reverse osmosis water, so it's really good. I don't want to be putting chlorine in in, in our fermenting. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse all this, and uh, and then put it back, you know, transfer it to the bowl that's underneath uh, after I drain it, and then I'm going to salt it and mash it. Um, and we will. I'll come back and show you. You know how that how that process goes. Uh, I have to change the blade to do the onions and carrots. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you with that. You obviously you got the gist of this machine and how beautiful. Look at that. 
you know. So um, I'll be back with the next segment. Okay, we're, we're back. So I have uh, washed my, my sauerkraut. It's quite the chore, I just want to let you know by yourself. This is definitely a two-man uh, operation when you're doing it this big, or two-woman operation, or one-man, one-woman. But you can see that it's already starting to shrink down. So now what we want to do is, you know, we need to salt it. And I don't go by any recipe. I just make sure that I give it a nice covering on, on the layers. And I'm going to probably going to be, you know, maybe a cup, you know, a cup and a half of salt is my guess. You know, and then I do, since this is a grinder and it would take, you know, a day to grind this with salt, but I do like the Himalayan pink sea salt. So you can do whatever you want. You can make your own. You can buy mashers. I happen to have, this is actually from my Norwalk juicer. And you literally, you know, you mash it and you pound it and you squeeze it and, um, and it will, if you let it sit, it, it will, it will start to bleed by itself. And, and, and that's the uric, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, that's the uh, lactic acid that's being released from the cabbage, and that's what will ferment and give you all that good bacteria. And so, um, you know, you just kind of kind of play around, mix it around. I'm going to, you know, move it around, and, and, you, and you can kind of see how, you know, it, it's getting juicy, and there's already some, some, uh, juice on the bottom of this and move that around and you know take some more salt now along the way here also while I'm mixing all of this up I'm going to add some some caraway seeds as I start mixing this and turning it around so then we have some good coverage, and then uh, the uh, juniper berries. I did put in my uh, blend tech and kind of chopped them up. And my goodness, it's the first time I've done this. It's quite, quite aromatic, and uh, you know. And I don't know. You know, I I don't have recipes or anything. I just I you know a pinch of this, a pinch of that, and that's just the, that's just the way I do it. I've always had good luck. But you know, you you know you can you know uh, also use uh, whey as a fermenting, and uh, for people that maybe trying to not use so much salt, you can use some salt and maybe some whey, and uh, it's pretty easy to make whey. I I I, I remember, you know I, I haven't done it. I remember reading is basically taking yogurt and uh, running it through a like a really fine cloth and. Whatever comes, you know, whatever comes out, or so, I don't know, comes out or is left over is the whey, um, and you can ferment with that. And there's, there's a, a, you know, there's so much information out there that you can find it yourself. So this is the kind of the exciting part here um, that we're doing, and uh, um, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna just finish up. I'm gonna show you how I would after I've done get mashing this. You know, and you want to get, you want to definitely start seeing fluid before you start putting it in. And as you actually, as you put it in the crock and you mash it in there, it's going to match some more, and then you can see the juice come up. So um, let me show you what to do with the fermenting crock. Okay, so we have our crock, and the way this thing works is that it has a a ridge here. They put water in, and it prevents uh, air from getting in. So that's pretty darn good. It's, you know, when you order this, some of them come with stones, some of them don't. You have to make sure. So it has the stones that you want to make sure that the, the, the fluid, if you have to add water, make sure you use good water. Um, if you have to add water, um, that it covers the stones at least two to three inches. I actually have uh, bits and pieces of granite because granite will not dissolve any acid. If you use marble, um, I have some bigger pieces of granite that I got from a, a granite place that has scraps and I put that in there for extra weight to hold it down so that all the cabbage is underneath the, 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 uh, its own lactic acid and that's how you, you, know, you don't have any issues with mold. Now remember when we took all those skins off? You know, this is what you're going to use as a dam. So we're going to fill this thing up 
and then you know probably to you know three quarters and then we're going to take these and we're going to just layer it as a dam you know to keep all the lattice underneath it then we put the stone on top and then I put some more stone and that's it and then you let it sit in a in a cool you know in a cool dark area it doesn't have to be you know you want it in the sun you know as long as you're you know you know dress sunlight on you probably find a closet but you know in, you know you want it to be in that you know 65 to 70 degree range you know a lot of people put them in their basement only problem with that is is that every once in a while the thing will start burping like crazy and the water will evaporate so you don't want to you know you don't want to let it run out of water what they say is if it runs out of water do not lift it just go ahead and put more water uh, because there's still a seal there where 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 the water you know was you know is there so um, that's pretty much it and this will uh, yield um, you know quite a bit and I'll put them in uh, half gallon jars um, let me show you what I what I you know you might want to order these while you're waiting because they're not easy to find sometimes it is um, I put them in these kind of jars ball jars half gallon and then from here is where I can change each one if I want to make it spicy if I'm gonna, like I said I'm gonna try a horseradish one this time I might even throw jalapenos in it because these are gonna sit these will sit after I make it, they might sit another three, you know, three months, five months, six months. I actually have a, a batch of uh, beets and cabbage that I did um, that is absolutely phenomenal and it's probably been in the fridge six months and it continues to ferment. You know, it's slower because of the refrigeration. Um, but this isn't, you know, it's not a big investment for this crock. It'll make your life easier. This is a 15 liters. They're pretty good size. They make them bigger. They make them smaller. It's up to you if you want to try uh, doing five liter ones and then you buy more of them. Um, I, I thought that this was a happy medium for me, but um, you know, to really be honest with you, I probably wish I would have went with 10 and got a couple of them, and then that way I can kind of make batches. But uh, you know, I, this one, this one wor wor works well. And um, so, and, and another little thing is that I hate those other jar, the the plastic, uh, the metal ones. Um, but those are those are canning. So if you you know you know first of all you should never after this is done you don't boil or anything because then you will kill all the bacteria. So this stays raw. So these caps I really really like, especially if you're going to open them. Like you can use the other ones, and then when you're ready to eat this one, replace it with a, pl a plastic cap. Uh, it's just so much easier to use. Those other ones are a pain in the ass. They get stuck, and um, I, 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 don't, I don't like them. So uh, just wanted to you know uh, show you how to, how easy it is to make sauerkraut. This is a really big batch, and I only, I probably only have to do this once every five months. You know you know, and if you if you can get into a co-op with people and everybody pitches in and everybody helps. Um, then you can fly through this. You know, I mean, this 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 is a nothing. You know, even if you have the hand shredder, but you know, invest in the tools, invest in the bowls. You know, this this is at the you know, if there's an Asian supply or Asian market, they have all this stuff because they make a lot of kimchi. So you have all this, um, all these big bowls around. So um, get the tools, invest, and then your life will be easier in the long run. And um, I'll see you in the next video. I have a couple of things that I've been trying. Uh, now that I, I've lost all the weight I want to lose, um, I am, you know, trying to put on. I'm not trying to get, you know, I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder. I'm just trying to tone up and and look good and and lose body fat. You know, I just want to get rid of this this stomach that I've had, you know, my whole life. And it's getting there. It's getting down there. And um, and I I want to share some of the things I've been I've been doing. Uh, you know, with you. So uh, we'll, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll see you in the next video, and hopefully, I'll be a little more fit. You know, in a, in another month or so. I've been really loyal, going to the gym five days a week, um, but doing resistance stuff. You know, more. Um, not, you know, I don't want to hurt myself. I'm going to be 50 years old. I, I don't. You know, I don't need to be a giant. You know, gorilla. Um, I just want to look good and feel good and. Um, and I don't want my joints to hurt like they did and I'll have to share what I've been doing I have to give it a little more time to see if that's what's really helping my joints but um, that'll be on another video we'll see you soon